All right, now that I've properly gone crazy and completely skipped over the Death Watch uh, with, which, you know, I mean, it's fine. Like, there's seven total Death Watch players out there. I'm sure they'll be okay. Uh, we can get into to real factions now. Actual dark god loving factions right now. We're not going to go through all of Chaos at one time. Good god, no. Good, good god, no. Uh, we're going to go through them one by one. Uh, but we're going to start off with the one that I care the most about because it is one of my favorite armies. It is the Chaos Space Marines. Uh, sisters always have top spot, but right under Sisters, Guard and like CSM are kind of tied. But uh, good old um, Night Lords are just they're really up there for me. So we are going to talk exactly about all of them. Uh, well, Chaos Space Marines. And there's a lot to answer because we don't have a lot of, uh, of answers for uh, very specific things. Um, so it's extremely excited. So to, re to go over the whole thing again, their army-wide ability is Dark Packs which is every single time you shoot or fight, you can give every weapon in that unit lethal hits or sustained hits one. And then afterwards, they must take a leadership test and if they fail, it's D3 mortal wounds. It is uh, make very questionable deals with the dark gods to kill things faster. And there is this truly nothing more sp uh, chaos space marine than that right there. Uh, so past that, there's also a little thing that shows how many of certain, you know, other army faction things you can bring, uh, the amount of points, basically. So you want to bring in a whole bunch of uh, Zerkers, Marines, Plague Marines, etc. You just bring in this uh, 500 points for Strike Force. Though we don't know what the detachment rule is, so let's do that. Ooh, detachment rules. Okay. Um, when mustering your army, each time you select a Astartes unit, a Heretic Astartes unit from your army, if that unit is not an epic hero and does not already have one or more of the keywords listed below, you must select one of the keywords listed below for that unit to gain. Uh, note which units gain which keywords in this way on your army roster. Each time a unit with one of these keywords makes a dark pact, it gains the associated ability below until the end of the phase. Interesting. So it affects entirely the dark pact and it has these things restrictions. Uh, you cannot use corn for a psyker. That makes sense. A character unit with the leader ability can only be attached to a bodyguard unit with the same one above. Now that makes sense. You can't have a Nurgle, a Nurgle Lord with, with a Slanesh legionaries. All right. So corn blood fury in the fight phase. If this unit's weapon gained the lethal hits ability, this phase as a result of dark pact, unmodified hit roll of five of scores, critical hit. Okay, so fives and sixes auto wound in melee for corn during the dark pack. That's actually extremely good and maybe a little too good, not gonna lie. Uh, Zeech is the exact same thing, except it is um, in the shooting phase. Yep. Nurgle. Oh, oh, these are all um, basically the same thing. Nurgle is shooting, sustain hits one, five up. And then Slanesh is sustained hits one five up in melee. So it's uh, it's five up or, or becomes sixes in shooting for Zinch and Nurgle, except it's just lethal and sustained. And Corn, it's uh, you know lethal and sustained fight and fight. Um, and then undivided is Glory to Chaos. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, reroll a hit roll of one. I don't think there is any situation in which. This is not better. I think a dark god is always better. Like, like every time. Um, yeah. I I don't think they cost points. It says you just he does not already have one or more of the keywords listed below. You must select one of the keywords listed below for that army for that unit to gain. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this looks incredibly strong. Uh, this is this is setting off my warning lights in my ears, saying uh, this looks a little too strong. Um, we we we've noticed the issues that come with a lot of situations. Now, granted, you have to dark pact, uh, which means that you there's a good chance, well, not a good chance, there's a chance um, that you'll just take D three mortal wounds for your efforts, and that could you know that is an issue, and you only get this when you dark pact. So. 
It's specifically for that and only for that. But I'm not going to lie. This is looking uh, a little good. Um, like, uh, particularly on vehicles. I think uh, Zinch vehicles might end up being really nasty. Oh, auto wounding crap. It, wait, if you can. Uh, select one of the keywords listed below. Heretic Astartes units. Epic, not Epic Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess maybe vehicles don't have Dark Pact on their data sheet. Well, we'll find out really soon, won't we? Um, I'm not going to lie. This is looking really strong. Uh, I, I honestly would have maybe had other choices instead, but um, who oh boy. I don't think Glory to Chaos would be better in any way, shape, or form. I, I think that these always, I think um, from a, because, because sustained hits, is basically plus one to hit. Think about it, if you if you hit with um on threes, but sixes generate an additional one. It's kind of like you were hitting on twos because you gain the extra one that would have been the twos, right? For, if, if it's perfect, obviously uh, there's a lot more um, swinginess in it. Obviously, how many sixes you roll, there's a lot of that from a a general a, a general like average perspective exploding six to sustain hits one is plus one to hit. So in a sense, this is plus two to hit in the shooting phase if you're Nurgle, plus two to hit in the uh, fight phase if you are Slanesh. Uh, and then this is depending on what you're fighting with lethal hits, like big tanky stuff. So it's a lot better than reroll ones to hit in a ton of ways. So, all right, we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, strats. Infernal rights. Your opponent's shooting phase... Just have an enemy unit uh, target it until the end of phase worse than the attack target. Uh, oh, it's literally just armor of contempt. Wait, 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 hold on. Your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase just after an enemy unit has selected its targets. One hair took a star unit from your army that was selected as a the target of one or more attacks. So the end of phase, each time an attack targets your unit worse than the AP people. Yeah, yeah. Was armor of contempt two CP on the other ones? I thought it was one CP. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it is one CP. What the heck? What the heck, guys? What the hell? You just slap us with the, the worst version? Oh, two CP armor contempt. What the heck? Ah, whatever. Eternal hate. One CP, one heretic Astartes unit from your army that was selected as a target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks fight phase. So then the phase, each time a model is destroyed, if the model is not fought this phase. Ah, so it's a fight on death with plus one if you are corn. Fight on death on a three up is pretty solid. That's very good. Wait, don't space marines have a fight on death? It's two CP for the fight on death though, I think. But I think it's fight on death no matter what. Only in death does duty end. I think it's like, I don't think there's like a roll. Eh, whatever. Profane zeal. You're shooting a fight phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack, reroll a hit roll of one and a reroll a wound roll of one. If your unit is chaos undivided, you instead reroll a hit roll and wound roll. Oh, shit. Oh, that's really good. Well, though that's a good reason to take chaos undivided. Never mind. I've changed my mind. Full rerolls are way different. Um. Oh, crap. One CP for that? Holy crap. Oh, God. Oh, Chaos Space Marines are looking really good. Um, They're looking really good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Skin Shift. What? I have to read this. With the Dark Gods and the powers of the warp on their side, Chaos Space Marines can cheat death altogether. Their foes look on in horror as killing wounds knit themselves together in a cacophony of hideous cracks and squelches and shattered armor reforms. Such a blessing, the Heretic Astaris are both something far greater and far less than they once were. That is crazy. Um, one Heretic Astaris unit from your army. One model in your unit regains up to three lost wounds. In addition, if your unit is a Zinch unit below its starting strength, one destroyed model, excluding characters, is returned with full runes remaining. Ah, so it's basically the, the Dark Pact heal um, that the Master of Possession could do. Uh, just the heal part, but if you're Zinch, it's the heal plus the revive. Except it's only uh, it's um uh, it's actually three, not D three. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then we saw 
we saw a dark obscuration that is um basically give a unit stealth which is minus one to hit uh or uh lone operative basically which it, with nurgle is really good uh, like really really good one cp for this is crazy um and then a natural swiftness, I'm assuming, is the Slanesh one. To the end of the turn, your unit is able to do a shoot and declare charge, which is turn it fell back. Uh, but if it's Slanesh, you can do it also in a turn at which it advanced. So advance and shoot and charge if you're Slanesh. I'm not going to lie. These are looking really good. Uh, I'm a little worried because I, I don't like it when my armies are busted. I like them when they're like a nice like A minus. I like when they're a nice A minus. When they're an S, it's, it starts, I'm like, oh, um, but uh, we're we're looking at we're looking uh, a little good we're looking a little, a little strong okay um all right so enhancements ah the talent oh one two three four five there's five oh okay sick talisman of burning blood add one uh only oh because they're only on the undivided corn nurgle etc ah okay uh, corn model only add one to the attacks and strength of the bearer. Each time the bearer's unit makes a dark pact on the end of the stray, uh, into the phase, add D3 to the attacks and strength characteristics instead. I mean, it's pretty corn. It's pretty cool. Uh, Zinch. Each time the bearer's unit makes a dark pact, take a leadership test for the bearer. If that test is passed, you gain one CP. So it's an, an additional dark pact, I'm assuming. Uh, so it's two two tests, one for the death, one for the pain, and one for the uh, leadership. Eh, extra CP. This is pretty good, though. That's a lot of CP. Um, Orb of Unlife. Uh, at the end of the fight phase, roll 1d6 for every enemy unit within six inches of the bear. Add one to the result. The bear's unit made a dark pack that phase. On a four up, that enemy's unit suffers D3 mortals. All right, so it's just you run in there and you go blap, which is a pretty Nurgle thing. And then Slanesh, the bear, has the five of female pain ability. Oh, that's oh, it's model. It's model. Okay, I thought it was unit. Each time the bear uh, shoots or fights if the bear's unit made a dark pact after the bear's was resolved, those attacks select one unit that was hit by it. Uh, okay, battle shock. Cool. Cool. Makes them do a battle shock test. And then cast and divide him. Each time the bear's unit makes a dark pact, the weapons gain. Ah, both. They gain both abilities. Um, okay. Okay. I would say that the Liber Hereticus would be probably one I would take thanks to the stratagem. I originally was not so interested in casting a Vited. I've changed my mind. Um, the 1 CP strat for full rerolls to hit and wound plus lethal hits plus sustain hits is kind of nutty. Oh, uh, good God. And then I would probably take the Eye of Zinch. This looks really good. And... Uh, I do like Orb of Unlife, but you have to get up to them. So I'd probably take Orb of... I, I don't know. These two, for me, Undivided and Zinch are autos. The other three, I don't know. They're all pretty decent. They all have some good... I, for me, I guess it would be probably Intoxicating Elixir, depending on what I'm putting it on. Demon Prince, um, Disco Lord, something big. All right. Let's get in here. Abaddon, the War Master. Okay, the War Master, the War Master calls, and you must answer. I'm gonna adjust this so it's a little bit easier to look at. There we go. All right. Um, we've already seen the War Master before. He is a leader. Nine wounds, two up, five up, or five toughness. Not crazy, but he's a leader. That's the whole reason. As a leader, he's uh, not as crazy with like his stat line. Um, yeah, if he does not fail the leadership test, he gets a CP on with Dark Destiny. Uh, and then his various abilities are full rerolls to hit, which is uh, pretty crazy, and actually makes the, <laughs> actually makes all the the un, the the chaos marks and stuff really crazy because he has all of them. If you didn't, if you notice that he has all four marks. So with full rerolls rolls to hit, it's actually terrifying because. Oh God, that's so good because on five up that that changes everything for these guys. It would actually make me want to run the sustained hits one instead. But I guess you'd get all of them, wouldn't you? You would just get you would just get all of them. Good God. Um, though the four up interval is really good, and the rerolls are also good for the battle shocks and stuff. So all very very solid. 
Um, he can be attached to legionaries or terminator squads. And he must be a warlord, which makes sense because he's Abaddon. All right. I mean, that's all. We, we saw most of Abaddon already, so we can move through. Harkin. Harkin has T4, 3 up save, 5 wounds, 12 inch move. Um, he is chaos undivided at the moment. I don't think he gets anything. He's epic hero, so he doesn't get anything else. Um, so he has the Hell Spear, which is assault, sustain hits D3, which seems to be the new like beam weapon is a sustain hits D3. That's like it's how it's been adjusted, uh, which is a bit bizarre, but eh. Uh, hits, was it? Strength 8, AP 3, 3 damage. That's pretty good. Um, same thing with the Hell Spear for the extra attacks. Exact same profile in melee, but he also has Herald's Talon, which is 6 attacks at 5, 2, 2, with precision, which is not too bad. Um, well, this model is leading a unit each time the uh, model's unit ends a charge, moves like to one enemy unit with an engaging range, roll 1d6 for each model in this model's unit on a 4 pick. Okay, so they have the, um, I'm assuming he can be ran with Raptors? Yeah. So um, he runs with raptors and then he like slams into them and does mortals. While an enemy unit is within six inches of this model in the battle shock step, if that enemy unit is below the starting strength, they must take a battle shock test. This ability cannot cause a unit to take two battle shock tests in the same phase. So it's the classic. Uh, my, uh, you're losing if you've lost anybody, you have to take battle shock. I mean, it looks fine. You know, the mortal wounds on the head taker are the thing that I care more about. Uh, he's not particularly tanky or anything, um, but uh, with with there were some right hits, he might he might hit pretty hard, uh, depending. I I need to figure out if you gain like sustained hits. Does that go on top of the sustained hits you already have? Like if I dark packed him in melee for sustained hits, does that give him even more? I don't know. I don't know. So I need to figure that out. All right. Uh, Huron, the Blood Reaver. So, yeah, T4, 3 up, 5 wounds, pretty classic. Um, 4 up Invul, he's also undivided. Tyrant's Claw is a somewhat souped up Heavy Flamer, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, you've either got his Exalted Weapon, which is the exact same profile as Harold, uh, Harold, 5 2, two. or the Claw itself, which is 4 2, 1, like a sweet mode. If I talk a lot, I get like hiccups in the morning. I don't understand why that, what the hell that is. Whew. All right. The Tyrant of Badab. While this model is leading a unit, add one to the OC characteristics of models in that unit. That's all right. Pretty good. Um, okay. He's got a redeploy. That's also very good. The Ray Corsair move. Okay. That's pretty good too. Uh, and then his, uh, his funny monkey's knowledge thing. Once per battle, when an enemy unit ends a normal advance or fallback move within nine inches of this model's unit, uh, it can... Uh, not with engage range, you can make a normal move with a D6. Okay, so he basically is just kind of a, a movement guy. He can get closer or fall or go back or whatever he needs to do. Uh, and then he also has a redeploy and he has extra OC. And, you know, he 10 attacks at 421 certainly will hit, especially if you uh, do a um, Dark Pact, which means he will be rerolling ones to hit, which is actually really good considering he's uh, wounding on twos. All right. Uh, he can be put with Chosen and Legionaries. Well, kind of interesting that Abaddon can be brought with Chosen. Hmm. All right, the Demon Prince. So the Demon Prince is T10, T10, two up save and 10 wounds. Ah, he's not a leader. So the Demon Prince is not a leader. Okay, he has a four up invul, which is, all this is, is a huge buff, honestly, but that makes sense because he can be shot now. Um, he has the Infernal Cannon, which is the fun gun thing, at 5, 1, 2. So it's a heavy bolter uh, that hits on twos. All right, basically heavy bolter. And then he's just got Hellforged weapons. So axe, sword, doesn't matter. Six attacks at 8, 2, 3, or 14 attacks at 6, 0, oh, 1. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. And then he has his Demonic Allegiance, which is... If he is Korm, he adds two to the strength of his weapons, which is pretty good. It goes to 10 and, uh, and 8. If he's Zinch, he gets three more shots with his gun. So actually, six shots with that gun is pretty good. Uh, if he's Nurgle, he's Toughness 11. And if he's Slanesh, he moves 10 inches, not 8. Uh, you know, all these things are pretty fine. Um, his Deli Demise, funny enough. So while a Heretic Stars unit is within six inches of this model, each time a ranged attack is allocated to a model in that unit, that model has... Oh, he gives the benefits of cover. Each time this model shoots or fights while resolving those attacks, you can reroll one hit and one wound. All right, so he's got a... Um, um, 
the the Eldar thing, the the reroll, the foresight, reroll one hit, one wound. Interesting that he gives a six inch aura of cover. Huh. Didn't really expect that. I mean, he looks pretty juiced. You know, he, he moves decently well. He's got pretty good uh, overall overarching stat line. T10, 10 wounds, especially with a four up invul. He can be shot though. So he might just die immediately or he might be pretty good. I don't know. Uh, we'll certainly have to see. Um, he looks good though, certainly. And then, uh, yep, no other changes to there. I was about to say, what about the winged one? All right, here's the winged one. So the winged one loses a toughness. He goes to T9. Um, but he gets an extra four inches of move and, of course, fly. Uh, same thing with all of the weapons. However, there are some differences over here. Uh, and then same thing with all of this. Uh, each summon model it ends a charge move, select one enemy with an engaging range of it, and roll 1d6 for each of the model's remaining wounds. For each four up, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound to a maximum of six. Uh, the model's engage... Of this model's remaining wounds. Oh, God. It's like 10. 10 four-ups to a max of six. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. That's a big slam directly in the face of them. Uh, each time this model ends a normal or advanced move, like when a unit it moved over, it must take a battle shock test. Well, that's okay. It's a cool way to force battle shock. Just fly over them and cause problems. You know, I, I will say they actually, they both, if they're the same cost, seem relatively balanced. The faster movement is really great, and the fly will get you in there. Plus, slamming into them will do a lot of good mortals. Uh, but the um, other Demon Prince is a bit more uh, a bit more strong with its reroll one hit and wound, and uh, tanky. It's a tanky... It, basically, the, the ground Demon Prince is a uh, tanky one to buff everyone else, and the flying one is just go out there and murder, which is kind of the whole point of Demon Prince's originally, was a flying one was go out there and murder. That's just kind of neat. Baby is Bile. Oh, Mr. Bile. He's uh, one acolyte? Yeah, one acolyte. He, of course, is Castle Divide because he thinks gods are cr cringe. He doesn't think they exist. Um, he is a leader with a five of no pain. Makes total sense. Uh, he has this wacky old needler at anti infantry two up pistol. Three shots at two, one, two. It's infantry, basically. Uh, and then his melee is the six attacks with the rod of torment at five, one, three. Pretty good. Two more attacks with his fancy uh, medical tools and one, you know, shitty attack by his surgeon. Um, if this unit is attached, oh, so who can be attached to? Chosen and Legionaries. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, if this unit is attached to a unit at the start of the battle until the end of the battle, add one to the strength characters melee up to equip by bodyguard models and add one to the toughness of bodyguard models. Oh, shit. That's very good. T5 Legionaries. All right. Uh, once per turn, when an attack is allocated to a model in this unit, if this contains Fabius Bile, you can change the damage characters to zero. Ah, so you put the attack onto the Acolyte, and it blanks it. The first time this unit's Fabius Bile model is destroyed, roll 1d6 on a 2-up, set it back up on the battlefield as close as possible, where it's destroyed, um, with full wounds remaining. If this model is attached to a unit when it's destroyed, it must be attached to... Oh, wow. It's literally a Celestine. It's a Celestine Revive. Hot damn. That's actually solid. Extremely solid. Damn. Plus one into strength and toughness of the of the unit, too. Damn, Bile. You actually... You're not too bad. You might not be the greatest thing ever, but, I mean, with the right, like, big brick of Chosen or something, like, oh, that could actually be pretty nasty. Good job, Bile. You actually might have a point this time. Cypher. Lone operative. Yeah, no shit. Um... Let's see, four up in Vol, T4, five wounds. All right, so Cypher's got his bolt pistol and plasma pistol, both with sustain hits one, both assault. Six attacks with the bolt pistol at 411, or three with the plasma pistol at 832, and then six attacks with his big fisty fists. Once per battle, after your opponent uses a stratagem, he has a Vect. All right, so plus one to the cost of strat. That's pretty great. Each time an enemy unit is selected to shoot, if one or more of those targets uh, uh, attacks target a friendly Heretic Astarius unit within three inches of this model, after that enemy unit has finished making its attacks, this model can shoot as if it were the shoot phase, but all, but when all doing so must only target... Huh. So he has a shoot back. At either him, if they fire at him or nearby units. Um, but his guns are only 12-inch range. 
So they have to get really close, which means they can shoot him. Uh, so I'm a little unsure about that because it just means that once they can shoot him, that means that they're able to, uh, you know, uh, he can shoot back then. I I'm not sure how useful that ability will be. Um, giving him a Vect is cool, though. It's, I mean, Vect is always great, so that's that's nice to have. Um, I mean, his guns are certainly not bad, but it's just a little iffy. Um, he doesn't have a, a mark, though, either, which is unfortunate. There's no there's no Chaos Undivided or anything down there, so you won't get reroll ones to hit if you Dark Packed him to shoot, which is really unfortunate. Um, Master of Possession, okay, some non-epic heroes now. Uh, T4, 3F4, uh, uh, classic leader stuff. Um... So, uh, Rite of Possession is his Witchfire. It's a two-shot pistol with massive anti-psyker and precision at 432 or 633. Um, so it is basically just a, a trying to, you know, you're trying to possess the guy you're like eh, and trying to screw with his brain. Um, and yeah, Master of Possession is a pretty anti-psyker guy. It's kind of his whole shtick um to, to screw with other psychers. The Staff of Possession is also anti-psyker 2 up and 4 attacks at 6, 1, D3. Um, it's it's fine. You know, it's like a little bit of extra shooting. It's not the worst thing ever. Uh, but the Demon King part here, while this model is leading a unit, add one to advance and charge rolls made for that unit and models in the unit have the 6 up, feel no pain. Advance and charge? 6 up, feel no pain? I mean, yeah, that that's not bad. You know, he's a 5 up invul as well. I forgot about that part. Um, once per phase, when while this model... Is selected to shoot or fight, it can use this ability. If it does, this model's unit suffers one mortal wound, and until the end of the phase, each time this model makes a psychic attack, add one to the hit and wound roll. Which is one to hit when wound roll for this thing right here. Which, like, it's fine, I guess. Nothing that special. Eh, eh, it's not really, it's not really, uh, really grabbing me. It's not really grabbing me. Um, I like the six up feel no pain and the advance and charge thing there. And I mean, like these two shots are like not that bad, but I'm not quite sure if he's really grabbing me overall as a unit. Not like he used to. Chosen legionary and possess. Oh, he can. Oh, he can be brought into possessed. Oh, that changes things maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, he has an eight inch move. Oh, okay, that changes things a little bit because giving possessed advance and charge and feel no pain is way different than giving legionaries and chosen. Okay, maybe, maybe to buff the possessed. The Chaos Lord. All right. So, everything here is what I expected. Bolt pistol, plasma pistol, the whole thing. Demon Hammer is uh, hits on threes, eight to two devastating wounds. It's, it's a thunder hammer. This is all what I expected. Lord of Chaos is the exact same thing as Rites of Battle. Uh, target with a stratagem for zero CP, even if it has already been used. Uh, I won't lie, with good old Chaos... Um, Undivided, getting two full rerolls to hit and wound could be insanely good. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, chance for glory, once per battle at the start of the fight phase, the small can use his ability. If it does, until the end of the phase, improve the strength, attacks, armor pen, and damage of melee weapons equipped by models by one. All right. All right. Not, not like amazing, amazing, but it increases the damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, attacks, strength, armor. So if I just read him with like a power fist let's say he bought he bangs that out it's six attacks at strength nine ap3 damage three you know this actually is pretty good now that i think about it maybe i was talking too much shit that actually isn't too bad at all all right so, so the, the generic lord has basically the same thing as the cs as the regular space marine one rights of battle which is fine um chosen and legionaries are his two main things and oh uh, yeah what's the accursed weapon yeah, it's just a power up and an extra attack. That's right. All right. Um, Chaos Lord and Terminator Armor has the same thing. Um, he has a combi bolter or a combi weapon. God damn it with all that crap. His exalted weapon is basically an accursed weapon, but with damage two. He has paired accursed weapons, which I'm assuming are the, the lightning claws, which have the exact same stat line as lightning claw. And then uh, each time... He, okay, so he has Lord of Chaos, but he also has half damage. Four up invul, six wounds, two. All right, half damage. And I'm assuming you go with Terminators, yeah? All right. And then too crazy yet, Sorcerer. He literally has a smite. 
It's the exact same thing. This is a smite. D6 shots, 5-1-D3 or 6-2-D3, devastating wounds, hazards, etc. Force weapon. It is exactly a smite. While this model is leading a unit, minus one from the hit roll. That's pretty good. Each time this model is selected to shoot or fight after resolving its attack, select one enemy unit that has been hit by one or more attacks that has the psychic ability. Then you must take a leadership test. If that test has failed, so there's D3 mortals. Okay, so you smite someone. And if they fail the leadership test, they take D3 mortals. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's actually pretty nasty too because if you uh, dark packed, you can, as a sorcerer, you can actually make your smite really, really good. Either through rerolls or perhaps um, Zinchian lethal hits. Or actually, I would probably take the Nurgle one. Nurgle sustain hits on a five up to possibly pop that devastating wounds. All right, cool sorcerer. Chosen legionaries again, yep. Terminator armor sorcerer is same deal for the most part, except obviously his stat line. Uh, his Chaos Familiar lets you blank a save, which is very cool. That's nice. Bop. Um, and then, oh, Warp Time. While the small is leading a unit, you can reroll advance and charge rolls. Hey, that's pretty good if you're coming out of, uh, with the Terminator Squad, coming out of Deep Strike. Hey, 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 hey. At the start of the shooting phase, one Psycho with this ability can use it. If it does, select one enemy within 12 inches and visible to that Psycho and roll at 1d6. I don't want to take d3 mortals. Um, and on the two up until the start of your next movement phase, each time an attack targets the enemy unit, improve the AP by one. Okay, no more turning off invuls, which makes sense because we've, for the most part, completely removed that from the game minus the Vindicare Assassin, I think. Um... That is, okay, so it basically just makes your AP uh, by one, which considering how guns are nowadays in 40k, I would say that's actually pretty cool and, and genuinely worth running. So, uh, Warp Time Sorcerer with uh, Terminators, making all the Storm Bolters like AP1, you pop down, hit them with the thing, with uh, Death Hex and give uh, rerolls to charge, hey, not too bad. Oh, Lucius. Lucius. All right. So. He has a souped up heavy flavor, which is cool. Duelist Sword and Lash of Torment is eight attacks at 5-2-2 two, two, with the precision rule to kill some characters, which is a very Lucius thing to do. He has fights first, which is very nasty nowadays. And while he's leading a unit, the models also have fight first, which is also really, really good. Holy, okay. Um, armor of Shrieking Souls. Each time this model is destroyed by an attack made by an enemy unit each time, um, that unit must take a leadership test. If that test is passed, the enemy suffers D3 mortals. If the test, test is failed, the enemy unit suffers D6 mortals. If mortals inflicted in this way destroy that enemy unit, set this model back up on the battlefield as close as possible to where it was destroyed and not within engaging range of any enemy models with D3 wounds remaining. If this model was attached to a unit that was destroyed, it must be set back up. Okay, that is absolutely hilarious. That is, okay, I'm sure fans of Emperor's Children and Lucius are very happy with this. So, because the idea is that if you if you kill Lucius and you take pride in killing Lucius, you like become Lucius. That's the whole the whole problem with him. Hence the armor full of faces. Um, but so if you it says if he's destroyed, it doesn't say in melee. It just says destroyed. So if they fail the test, they take D6 mortals, and if it kills the unit that killed them, then he just comes right back alive, which is absolutely hilarious. There's a lot of things that have to happen for this to work. Not only do you have to have them fail the test, but you also need them to die. Because it says the enemy unit, not model, needs to die by the D6 mortals. So there's a lot of very specific things to come out. But if you roll hot enough and they roll poor enough, it can be pretty hilarious. I like that a lot, Lucius. Also, yeah, noise marines. Okay. Ooh, the Disco Lord. I've been very curious about Disco Lord. It's one of my favorite models. 10-inch move, T9, 2-up save, 10 wounds. Uh, with a 5-up invul naturally. Okay, nothing like... Not insanely tanky, but he's okay. He's actually squishier than the than the foot demon prince, which I'm a little surprised by. Um, he has the Bale Flamer, which we've seen before. It's very solid now. Uh, or the Auto Cannon is the other option you can take, which with it being damage 3 now might actually be something you might consider uh, over the Bale Flamer, but not really for me. Also, the Bale Flamer lost some range, so actually even more of a reason to maybe take the autocannon. Um, 
he also there's also the magma cutter, which was replacing the Technovirus injector, right? Which Technovirus injector is an anti vehicle one extra attack now at three three two. Eh, that's not great. I don't love that. I would probably actually the mat. Wow, this, I'm turning this all in my head. No bail flamer. No techno virus injector. We're using the auto cannon magma cutter build. What in the world? Who am I? I actually might take the bail flamer still. Um, but the but the magma cutter sounds a lot better. God, what in the world? Um, goddamn. So uh, he has also his impaler chain glaive at six two two with four attacks with lance. And then four extra attacks to the blade, limbs, and tails at 612. Okay, so he has actually been dropped in power substantially. Um, he has way fewer attacks overall, less AP, um, and all kinds of things. Uh, less damage with the Technovirus Injector. He, uh, this, it's actually a pretty significant drop in terms of melee damage. The range is about the same, but his melee is actually down a lot. No Mecha Tendrils either. Um, no four extra attacks to Mecha Tendrils. Once we're turned at the start of the opponent's shooting phase, select one enemy vehicle unit within 12 and visible. It must take a leadership test if it... Uh, oh, God, it's like the other one we saw. Subtract one from the hit roll, and if it's passed, it is not eligible to shoot at all. Okay, which is very strong. At the start of your shooting phase, select one enemy enemy vehicle unit within 12 of this model. So at the end of that phase, it's some heretic of Starry's model makes sense to have the targets that unit reroll a wound roll of one. Okay, so he's got a little bit more of like a character support role now as opposed to just a pure murder man. Um, Corrupt Machine Spirits, as we mentioned before, probably won't come into play much because your opponent can move out of 12 if they have the ability to. You can always block them in or get them in melee and that can cause real problems. But other than that, it's still a, a, a good thing to be scared of, especially with a 10-inch move. Um, as for Spirit Thief... That is not bad because you just at the start of the shooting phase, you pick the vehicle within 12, which means not only can your army reroll a wound roll against what of one against it, but so can you. And it's a wound roll, so the bail flamer will work. Um, for the vehicle corrupting guy, he doesn't really do a great job at killing vehicles. Um, maybe with Lance, it might be a little bit better, but he doesn't do much. If you, I mean. You might gain one extra attack for two damage against the vehicle with Technovirus Injector, but if you want to really kill vehicles, I'd take that Magma Cutter, honestly, and then get up really damn close into their grill and just burn them. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh. Oh. He himself is not a vehicle. Huh. Huh. That's actually a pretty substantial nerf as well, because that means he can't fire into combat or out of combat. He can only shoot his bolt pistol. So if he's in combat, he can only pistol you. Huh. Because he's a, he, unless, unless mounted have a have a different have a different rule set. But I don't hmm. I don't know if they do. I don't know how to feel about Disco Lord. I feel like he might be losing some points, hopefully. All right, the Warp Smith. Uh, two up save, but pretty standard stat line besides that. He has all of his funny little tendrils, his Melted Tendril, his Plasma Tendril, and his Flamer Tendril, all kinds of little weapons to go along there. Uh, and also he has his melee weapons itself, which is either his Warp Hammer, which is fine, or his Exalted Weapon, which is fine. He really doesn't do much. What you're here for is this. Uh, three inches gets lone operative, cool. In the command phase, regen D3 moons and add one to the hit roll. Cool. And then at the end of your movement phase, that's one enemy vehicle unit within 12 inches. They must take a battle shock test. Oh, I mean, that's that's okay. It's fine. Ooh, we can put on Havocs. Yeah, I mean, eh, this is fine. I'm not really writing anything home about that. It's okay. It's 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 all right. No, whatever. All right. Exalted Champion. This guy was always kind of meh. Uh, let's see. Combi Weapon or, or Bolt Pistol, whatever. Exalted Weapon 5, 5 2, 2. Well, as Maul is leading a unit, add one to the hit roll. That's great. Each time as Maul's unit makes a dark pact until the end of the phase, add D3 to the strength characteristic of Maul's equipped by this model. That's also good. Imagine if you gave him the corn and then you gave him the uh, the corn 
um, enhancement where you get an extra D3 strength and attacks as well. So it's 2D3 strength and then D3 extra attacks. And then hitting an extra... I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's not bad. Um, it just makes an attack too. Just an attack in general. So plus one to hit for attacks overall might actually make the Exalted Champion pretty good. And it's also, it's also a lieutenant. So Chosen and Legionaries can also be attached with it along with the Lord, which is, which is genuinely not too bad. All right. Ah, the Dark Apostle. What can he lead? Accursed cultists, regular cultists, chosen and legionaries. Oh, kind of shocked you couldn't lead a uh, possessed. Uh, Cursed Crozius. Yeah, it's all, all about the same. We kind of expected four up invo. Okay. Well, this model is leading a unit that contains a Dark Apostle model. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to the wound roll. That's very solid. Once per battle, at the start of any phase, select one Heretic Astarius unit that is battle shocked, and with a nine, it is no longer battle shocked. Cool chaplain ability. The start of the fight phase, if this unit contains one or more Dark Disciple models, you can select one of those models and one enemy unit with an engagement range of this unit. Then roll one D6 on a two through five, then make a mortal. On a six, they suffer <laughs> D3 mortals. That Dark Disciple model is then destroyed. Okay, so <laughs> you just sacrificed your little dudes uh one like one time just go go get him buddy and they just dies and does mortals that's hilarious it's such like if you want it you can also use him as ablative wounds as a way to keep the dark apostle mostly alive because they also have a four up interval but that is actually hilarious you can just go get him buddy and he's just in that face magic and he blows up that's really that's really really funny Oh, the Dark Commune. So there's the Cult Demagogue. And then there's all the other models, which is... So this one's four wounds. And then the other models are one wound. They can lead, I'm assuming, yeah, a Curse of Cultists and Cultist Mobs. So, uh, Crave Auto Pistol. They have the Warp's Curse, which is a kind of mediocre smite for the most part. But nice little beep kind of smite ability there. Um, the Commune Stave has devastating wounds with D3 damage and Strength 3. Um, there's the blades that in four two one, which is actually not bad. Um, this is so silly. Such a such a silly stat line. Uh, you can reroll the test for the chaos icon. Cool, that's cool for the dark packs ability. Nice. Uh, and then the faithful flock is five up invul for the unit. All right. Once per battle in your command phase, if this unit contains the demagogue, it can use its ability if it does until the end of the term. This unit can declare a charge in which it advanced, and each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the hit and the wound. Oh, so you can just take this, this Dark Commune, throw it with some Accursed Cultists, fly your ass up there, and then just one time murder everybody. I, I mean, it's not great, this, this whole unit overall, but I don't know how many points it's going to cost. Um, because it's just, it's really, really wacky and strange. And I, I don't know. I don't know how many points it's going to cost, but with like a large enough cultist mob, you know, it, it might. It also just makes an attack in general, uh, which means it, you could probably do it with any kind of shooting weapons as well. Uh, eh, man, I'm not quite sure if it's good, if it's necessarily good enough, but it's kind of funny and it's awesome models. So, you know. All right. We've already seen the legionaries. Um, they're looking pretty, pretty tasty. Uh, we roll a wound roll of one on an objective marker in melee, all melee based kind of stuff. And then, of course, the cast icon, icon for Dark Pact um, goes with the 10 legionaries. So, uh, everything we're pretty, pretty classic on. The cultist mob has the grenade launcher, the firearm, uh, the flame or heavy stubber, brutal close combat weapon or close combat weapon. It's melee or not. Um, they have for the Dark Gods, which is sticky objectives, which is. Pretty good, actually. Don't mind sticky objectives being placed onto the cultist mob. They only have one OC, but with sticky, that's actually not too bad. I might take a squad of 10 just to put them in the back line, sticky the objective, and then leave. Uh, which is should be pretty all right. Um, and then we have the accursed cultists, which are uh, one wound mutants and three wound torments. They all have the same toughness now, though. And then blasphemous, blasphemous appendages, I'm assuming, are the small guys. And hideous mutations are the torments. Um, D6. Yep. Uh, three to six torments and five to ten mutants. So the same thing there. 
Uh, you know, not too bad on the hits. Uh, they all have a success field, no pain, of course. At the start of either player of each player's command phase, you can return either one torment or three mutants. Each. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know, with the dark commune giving them the the invul to possibly shrug off more damage, you know, maybe maybe there's a little thing here. Plus, this is actually a lot of attacks for the um, torment with with not terrible strength and damage. So, might actually be worth it. These guys are so cool. I love these models so much. Terminator squad. All right. Here we go. Please be good. Each time this unit makes a dark pact until the end of the phase, each time a model's unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit roll. Oh. It's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. You can just reroll the hit roll, huh? When you dark pack these guys, you might lose one, but full rerolls to hit. Is very good. This is very, very good. Uh, okay, here's the most important part. Damn it. For every five models in the unit, one model can have a pair of accursed weapons. No full squads of dual lightning claw terminators still. Gosh dang it. Ah, whatever. Um, accursed weapons here, though, and then the occasional, you know, maybe twin accursed weapons, which is what? An extra attack and twin links, so full reels to wounds, so eh, not bad. Um, but you can take, you can have them all have combi weapons, which are this weird, wacky profile that we've, that we've seen so often. But with the devastating wounds and mortals you can put out, combi bolters, full rerolls to hit, eh, you know, I mean, it's... It, ha it has its, its power. I will say that the Kami Bolter is a little bit worse now because they don't have the the thing that lets you, um, like, bolt discipline out to 24 inches. Uh, but you do, you can mark them, and when you dark pack them, full rerolls to hit with, like, lethal hits might actually just make your bolters kill tanks. So, with, like, the Nurgle mark or something, or maybe if it's the Zinch mark. Uh, maybe. Uh, they look fine. They look fine. There's no, nothing is really wowing me about them besides the spoiler part. Overall, they look pretty good. They look, they look like Chaos Terminators. They look like about what I expected them to be. Um, nothing about this too crazy. Ah, the Master of Executions. Five attacks, seven, two, two, precision and devastating wounds. While this model is leading a unit, each time the model in the unit makes a melee attack, the target's unit below. Ah, okay. Reroll, reroll the hit roll if they are wounded. Reroll the wound roll if they are below half. It's the classic executioner style. And if you kill a character, you get a CP. Yay! Wahoo! Sweet. Fine by me. Chosen in Legionaries. And you can also put this if another character has been added. So it's a nice little additional guy. Possessed. They are T6 now. Oh, hello. Uh, three wounds. Cool. They have four attacks each at 5 one, two. So they have had a AP drop and an attack drop. Uh, they lost an attack and they lost an AP. Um, still a good 9-inch move, though. They have a 5 of Invul. Nice. They have the Chaos Icon they can take, which... Oh, whoopsie. They have the Chaos Icon they can take, which allows them to reroll their, their Dark Pact test, which is also very good. Uh, Unholy Bloodshed. When it makes a Dark Pact until the end of the phase, they have the Devastating Wounds ability. Mmm. Mm, that makes a lot more sense. So uh, you would probably want... Well, it depends. You would maybe... Want to dark pack them for sustained hits for the hope of getting sixes to wound for those mortals, especially because their AP isn't that high. Um, so you might want to give them like the the on a five up sustained hits ability. But I guess it depends on what you're fighting. Five up lethal hits, depending on if you give them like Nurgle or uh, or Corn. Um, still though, that's uh, this is actually really good. How big can you make them? To ten still? Yeah, I mean. Reroll the test for the icon. Devastating. I mean, they're going to run at you and they're going to really hurt, which is their whole entire point. So sweet. Very nice. Chosen. Okay. I actually care a lot about Chosen because they're one of my favorite models. Um, they still have their three wounds. Excellent. Excellent. Um, they still obviously get their cursed weapons or their pairs of cursed weapons, their power fist, the whole nine yards, common weapons, etc. They have the chaos icon. This unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which it advanced or fell back. So it is, oh, so they have advance and charge and fall back and charge and advance and shoot. 
That's very good. That is very, very, very good. Huh. Okay. Okay. With three wounds and the speed at which I can throw them out there. Oh my. Hmm. That is that looks pretty nasty. Oh my god, speaking of nasty, this goddamn noise marine. All right, let's look at the noise marine uh, weapons. Blastmaster single frequency heavy. 923, three shots or varied at 611. The doom siren being the 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 flamer and then the sonic blaster being just the normal shots or whatever. In the shooting phase, have students shot select one enemy of those hits, they must take a battle shock test. Okay. So they, what do they have again? They start with bolt guns, but you can give one of them a blast master and then the rest uh sonic blasters and one and the champion a doom siren. And they have the chaos icon. I mean, they don't get the extra damage within half or anything. So kind of whatever. I, I was never one of those people who spam noise marines as CSM. They were not my thing. So I kind of just went all on by with that. But uh, I mean, Blastmaster has always been known to be quite powerful from a gun point of view. So, hey, you know, maybe you get some good stuff. They're not really wowing me. Ah, the Venom Crawler. I love the Venom Crawler. 12 inch move, T9, three up, nine wounds. Cool. Excruciator cannon, six shots at 612. That's about what it was before. It's minus an AP. The tendrils and claws, 612 as well. Pretty much the exact same stat line. No, it's literally the exact same stat line for both in melee and shooting. The end of the any phase, if one or more attacks made by this mall, the, that phase destroyed one or more enemy units until the end of the battle, add one to the attacks characteristics of this model's weapons, thanks to Soul Eater. Hmm. It has to have destroyed a unit, though, not a model. Which is a little bit worse. If it was a model, it'd be kind of crazy. It'd be too strong, actually, but pretty funny. Um, but it's at the end of any phase. So maybe you'll shoot to death. So just make sure that the Venom Crawler gets the last shot off. Just make sure he gets the last shot off. Um, oh, he has two excruciator cannons. Oh, he has six shots or no, 12 shots. Oh, oh, he has 12 shots. Excruciator cannon, six. Two excruciator cannons. He has 12 shots. Holy crap. That's actually very good. I dark pack this guy all the time. He just destroyed an entire squad of, okay, okay maybe, maybe Soul Eater is gonna happen more often than I thought. Damn, he shoots. What the heck? Okay, okay. Uh, bikers, T5, three wounds. Um, outmaneuver, the, that's the, the pull off at the end of the opponent's turn and put back in somewhere. Chaos Icon, eh, I mean, it's a, the bikers are not, extremely exciting to me one through six they're cool I, the models are so bad i just don't run them uh but you know they have the, the usual like weapons this is to be about the same i'm just gonna skip right past it because it doesn't seem anything fancy raptors okay this matters more to me because i'm the night lords inside of me um t4 three up two wounds while an enemy is within six inches of this unit each time they take a bow shock or leadership subtract one so they still have their fearsome aura at the start of the fight phase, each enemy unit with an engagement range of one or more units must take a bow shock test. Okay, that's actually uh, not too bad. That's pretty solid overall. They have the classic bolt pistol and chain sword, which is a fine group, and but you can always take a power fist or an accursed weapon and so on. Hmm. Okay, fine by me. Sounds good. I like that idea. I like that ability. It's a great way to bow shock actually matters now. So it's a great way to make it genuinely interesting and force it on your opponents. As for warp talons, they have four attacks of five to one, their classic twin linked lightning claw ability. They still keep their five up invul, but they selected to fall back. If the enemy unit is not battle shocked, your opponent must take a desperate escape. And if they are, they subtract one from the result for the desperate escape attempt. So a pretty classic case. Uh, I think there was a, was it Death Company or some other unit had the same thing, which is um, they die on like a one and a two if they fall back, but then it's a one, two, three if it's the other one. So, yeah, good old. All right, cool. War Talents. Havoc's Havoc Auto Cannon is two shots, of course, at 912. The Heavy Bolter we've seen. Laz Cannon we have seen. Uh, these guys are hitting on threes, by the way, as they are not taking the move and shoot a heavy penalty. Very interesting. They're still T5 also. 
The Reaper Chain Cannon is uh, eight shots of 501. And of course, they have a Flamer on the Sergeant. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack with a ranged weapon, you can ignore any or all modifiers to the hit roll and any or all modifiers to the ballistic skill characteristic of that weapon. Oh, interesting. So they are hitting on threes all the gosh darn time. Not gonna lie, four Laz Cannon Havocs with Chaos Undivided and that stratagem looking kinda spicy. Not gonna lie. Um, or, honestly, uh, Havocs with the uh, exploding fives with the last cannons might also be rather spicy. They both seem pretty good. So we will see. Uh, pretty good, though. Can only take up to five, of course, but uh, not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Oblitz are five wounds T7. So five wounds, wow. Uh, two up save and a five up invul. They are two to four now so they have to be minimum two interesting uh the flesh metal guns we've already seen what they do you either have the melta the new melta variant or the anti-blast type thing or the sustained hits one uh, and then the crushing fists are still pretty good you know they hit pretty hard for the most part uh, and then it says once per battle when this unit makes a dark pack it can use its ability if it does until the end of the phase range weapons have the indirect Fire ability. Oh no. That's not good. Why is that not good? The range might not be that long, but these hit really, really, really hard. Not only do they hit harm, but I can mark these guys with Chaos Undivided, slap them with a stratagem. Next thing you know, we've got full rerolls to hidden wounds on Melto missiles that have indirect fire. And I only might take mortal wounds because of that. But even if I roll the worst mortal wounds, I will still be alive. I would need to fail, on average, three dark pact tests to kill an obliterator. One. Okay. This is frightening. Um, I guess we'll see their points. I guess we'll see their points because at the end of the day, that is what the big equalizer, but this is a little spooky. A little spooky. Don't know if it's going to be good. Um, 24 inches is not that far, but it's far enough. So, well, we'll find out. We'll certainly find out. <laughs> All right, now for the rest of the stuff that's a little bit less uh, overly important. Um, Land Raider, of course, has seems to be the exact same stuff as the regular Land Raider. Um, you know, have the Soul Shatter last cannon is just, it's the God Hammer last cannon or whatever. Um, that's the whole thing. Uh, cannot take Obliterators, which is interesting to note. The Predator Annihilator is a twin last cannon, the twin link thing, reroll damage roll of one, the annihilator thing. It seems like all the similar, uh, the same thing I saw from each of the, um, each of these, uh, the marine ones. Destructor, improve the AP by one when firing at an infantry, which is actually, maybe actually worth taking. Um, and so on. The Vindicator, there's the Sheed Shield, of course, and the Demolisher Cannon. Oh, pretty classic. Nothing crazy here yet. All right, Defiler. Defiler. T10, 14 wounds, 5 up, invul, 3 up, normal. And it's got all... Defiler cannon is D6 plus 3, 10, 1, 3. So it's basically the same thing as the Lehman Rush new cannon, it would appear. Um, then every other cannon that it has is pretty classic. The Defiler claws is 16, strength 16, AP3, D6 plus 1 with 5 attacks. Uh, and the Scourge was replacing his head Twin Heavy Flamer for three extra attacks at 12 1 2. Each time this model makes a normal move or advanced move, it can be moved over friendly monster vehicle models if they were not there. This model can move over terrain features that are four inches or less in height as if they were not there. That's not a rule. That's not a real rule, Defiler Man. You needed a real rule. And then that rule on top of that rule. I mean, it's a good stat line, though. Solid, like, big, chunky tank thing. Good guns. Could be pretty good. We'll see. Okay. And then there's the Forge Fiend. 
Ectoplasm ca plasma cannon, D3 shots and strength 10, AP3, 3. Oh, that's actually pretty, pretty solid. The Hades auto cannon is six shots at 812, so it'd be 12 shots in total or three ectoplasma shots. So 3D3 or 12. Um, there's a good choice for both, though. I won't lie. If it had the jaws instead, though, it would have five attacks at 702 instead of the plasma cannon. But without any AP, it's a bit iffy. Each time this model is selected to shoot, it can use its ability. If it does, until the end of the phase, its ranged weapons have the devastating wounds and hazardous abilities. I see. I thought they would just tell me that if I dark packed it. Like when you dark packed, it has both. So if you take three ectoplasm cannon, uh, plasma cannons, you can give them all devastating wounds, but then you'll need to take three hazardous tests, which means you'll at minimum have a 50% chance of failing one, which isn't that bad, but it's three mortal wounds. And if you roll really bad, that can actually be a huge deal. Eh, still not bad, though. The Forge Fiend overall, still not too bad. He's got some good use. Uh, the Hellbrute here, with his big Hellbrute hammer, at five attacks at 14-3, D6 plus one, good God. Um, he still has all the usual Hellbrute plasma cannon is 8-3-3, D3 shots, yeah. Um, classic Dreadnought style thing there, all right. And this model is equipped with two Hellbrute weapons. They have the twin-linked ability, or two Hellbrute fists. I mean, also fine. Um, while a Heretic Astartes unit is within six inches of this model, each time that unit makes a dark pact until the end of the phase, its weapons gain both abilities conferred by that pact instead of one. Ooh, nice idea to have a Hellbrood around just to give you all the kinds of stuff you need. Might actually be a pretty, pretty handy ability. Just have the Hellbrood. Hey, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Well, I'll go with Missile Launcher, Ulti Multi Close Combat. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, all right. Hell Drake. Hades Auto Cannon is six shots at 812, or the Bale Flamer. Actually, a reason to take both, finally. Hell Drake Claws, Anti Fly, and Devastating Wounds. Gonna just pick people apart from the entire air. Makes it time to target a fly unit at one of the hit roll. Good for its melee and for the auto cannon. And that's about it. T9, 12 wounds. It is a it is nice that it's anti-fly, not anti-aircraft. Because then it can hit things like um flying demon princes or seraphim squads or other or jetpack guys. Like you're just picking them out of the air instead of just having to be only good at dealing with other flyers. So that's kind of cool. Might actually be worth taking a Helldrake. Mauler Fiend. The magma cutters it has, which is only the uh, two magma cutters, which replaces its lasher tendrils with two magma cutters if you want it. Um, or lasher tendrils are six attacks at 711, and the fists are six attacks at 14, 2, D6 plus one. Big, chunky punches. Um, and you can reroll advanced and charge rolls, and you can ignore any modifiers to its move or advanced character or move and advance, sorry, move, advance, and charge characteristic for it. And it's got a 10 inch move now. This thing's flying. 10 inch move, T10, 12 wounds, 5 up interval. This thing's flying. This thing, this thing will punch. This thing will punch. It'll punch real hard. Uh, rhino. It's it's a rhino. I'm skipping, I'm skipping the rhino. Oh, the chaos bomb. Hideous mutations. D6 plus 2. It's the same as the torment. 5 up feel no pain. At the start of each player's command phase, one mall unit regains up to D3 wounds. T5, 4 wounds. Hey, all right. It's, it's fine. Four up, save. The feeling of pain is nice. Eh, eh, this is chaos spawn. They come in squads of... Ah, squads of two. Darn it. Only squads of two. Gosh darn it. No more single spawns. Oh my god, the corn lotus skulls. Oh, good lord. Okay. T13, 24. Oh my goodness. Uh, Demon gore cannon. Gore Storm can't. I mean, I mean, I don't get into the Laura Skulls too much. Like I, some people love this model. I don't dislike the model, but I don't. I don't run the model. I don't have one. Um, God damn the damage on this thing though. Two d six shots at fourteen three three. Two d six shots at seven two two. I know you don't get to take all of them, but what is that? I have Gore Storm Cannon, Hayes Gatling Cannon, Great Cleaver of Corn. So it's at twelve at eight two. Gore Storm is d six plus three at ten two three. And then the Skull Hurler though. Good lord, how do you? That get replaced with the Gatling cannon. Yeah, I would do that. Great cleaver of corn is five attacks at 16, 4, 8. 
or 15 attacks at 822. Yeah, this thing will just murder everything in sight. Um, in the fight phase after this model is finished making its attacks, if this model destroyed one or more enemy units this phase, each enemy unit within six must take a battle shock test. Yeah, I would I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you on that one one bit. If I would been involved, yeah. Only a three up save though, kind of funny. Holy hell. Ah, the Noctilith crown. Okay, so this little fortification here. The, the classic six inch range of lashing warp energies, which is just some extra attacks. Um, T11, 14 wounds. While a friendly Heretic Astarius model is wholly within nine, they have a four up invul. Nine is not too bad either. That's actually pretty okay. Uh, each time a range attack is allocated to this model, if it, this model is not fully visible to every model in that attacking unit because of this fortification. Okay, so it gives cover. It also gives cover. That's cool. While an enemy unit is within engagement range of one or more fortifications from your army, this unit can still be selected as a target of ranged attacks, but uh, unless the model is a pistol weapon starting with a hit roll. Do I'm, okay, so it's just the fortification rule. So basically, you're taking this to give cover to your units and give them a four up invul. And if they get too close, slap them with slappy juice. It's fine. Oh, hey, Vashdor. It's fine. It's okay. I liked it better when you can get CP. I liked it better when you can gain CP from it. But I mean, the four up invul within holy within nine is not too bad. It, it's not the worst. It's not the greatest. But if you're taking Abaddon, you can also take that. But if you don't want to like use that one, you want to use other things instead of that for Abaddon. That's also an option. But eh, it's, just, eh, eh. it's okay. All right. Now for the real, real guy. Wait, I'm going to skip them real quick. It's Trey Guardsman Squad. Felgor Beastmen. Oh, these are all the kill team boxes. Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't much care about the kill team boxes. We're gonna. We're gonna just gonna skip them out outright. We're gonna go to the only person that actually matters here. And that's Vashtor. Sorry, Beastmen. I. I and Trader Guard Squad. I do not give a shit. I give a shit about him, Vashtor the Archifane. So let's give him a look. Vashtor is T nine two up save and fourteen wounds with a four up invul. He's not a leader or anything. His claw is a the same as it was before, but this time it's actually okay because it's got an extra AP than a normal fl flamer and extra strength. So that actually might be useful. The hammer, though, his anti-vehicle strike, six attacks, uh, devastating wounds, nine, one, three. So, okay, so it's actually got a good chance of doing like six to nine mortals to a, to a vehicle, which is very good. Uh, but it's also got sweep mode, which uh, might do like seven mortals to a vehicle. Um, no, it doesn't have devastating wounds. Sorry. I also have sweep mode, which can deal with uh, other kinds of infantry and stuff. All right. Overall, I mean, kind of what I expected from Vastor. Very anti-vehicle, master of mechanisms. Um, while a friendly demon vehicle is within six inches of this model, add one of the strength characteristic of weapons equipped by models in that unit. Okay, so that's going to generally buff up things like the Forge Fiend and stuff. That's pretty cool. All right. At the end of your movement phase, select one enemy vehicle unit within 18 inches and visible to this model. Until the start of your next movement phase, have the move characteristic of models in that unit and strike one from the attacks characteristic of melee weapons equipped by models in that unit. Okay. Still a little bit mad he can't heal anything. Um, still kind of goddamn upset about that because that's the whole point of the master mechanisms, but I do like the buffing of the demon vehicles, and I do like the crunching of the opponent's vehicles. Having the movement is pretty nasty, and reducing the attacks uh, can also be pretty good, depending on what you're using it on. Um, and, you know, his stat line's not too bad. He also moves really fast and flies, so he can he can get some smacks off. He's not, the, he's not like, wowing me totally, but he can, he can do something. Depends on his points. Um, okay, overall, gotta tell ya, uh, the CSM are looking really good, uh, maybe a little too good, I'm a little spooked, they have so much power in their stratagems, so much power in this entire keyword thing right here, good lord, and, um, their enhancements are also, well, they're pretty good. They're not, they're not the craziest thing, but some of the abilities that they have and the, the powers they have, particularly the fact that you can like use rights of battle to get a free strat. And if it's one of these strats, uh, it's, it's, 
solid. It is solid. Um, there's some crazy stuff that you can be using here. And oh, it, like it's it's good. It's real good, man. I, I am super impressed by CSM overall. I, I think they might actually, I don't know. We don't know points yet, but I'm a little like, ooh, right now. They're looking super powerful. I need to find out if um, sustained hits gives you more sustained hits. If your gun has sustained hits one, does using a dark pact give you more? That's all I need to know. Um, yeah, thanks for watching this. I will uh, try to get the other factions out. Um, no promises, just because tomorrow I think is like Imperium, and that means Sisters in Guard and Stodies, and I also play those things, and then I think Necrons are after that. So it's like, forgive me for not coming out with uh, Chaos Knights, you know? So we'll see. Uh, thanks, though, so, so, so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.